I think I'll go ahead and start the kind of inflow of, uh, of people has seemed to slow down. So thanks for your time. This is Greg with Axis. I haven't done one of these trainings uh, in a while. Uh, it's good to see so much interest in these advanced trainings. Good to see so many familiar names joining. Um, the, the topics that we'll cover today, three short ones, really two, uh, highlighting and kind of giving a, a show off of our new uh, page break feature, which was a long time in the coming. <laughs> Thanks to have that rolled out. Uh, then also we've made an improvement to our linked booking feature. So I'll show us how to uh, copy an, iten an entire itinerary and link all the bookings together. And then how to take an individual booking from an existing itinerary and copy and link it into another existing itinerary. And then the, the newest feature as of this morning is how to hover over the link icon to see which bookings it's actually linked into which other itineraries uh, it's linked into. So without further delay, we'll go ahead and jump right into the page break feature. Uh, and we'll start off with a with an advanced feature that um, that you might not even know about. It's not really an access feature. Uh, it's more of a desktop feature. It's kind of a search feature. So I went ahead and set one of these itineraries up for a page break. And in the title, I've, I've written the words page break. Uh, and on your computer, if you have a Mac, if you press Control and F at the same time, and if you're in a non-Mac, I think, or, sorry, Command and F, and if you're in a non-Mac, it's Control F. If you do that, you'll see a little search bar pops up. You'll see, hopefully it's not covered by your GoToMeeting uh, banner. Mine's kind of towards the top right screen. And now this is kind of a superficial search. So if you type in the name of a traveler or the dates, or if you type in uh, the name of the itinerary, uh, the computer, the, the command will actually point you in the right direction. So I wrote in the word page break. So you'll see it kind of pointed me right to that itinerary. So people are always asking about a search feature in Access. That's kind of a superficial, not much of a deep dive search. But certainly if you have a lot of itineraries going on, it is a nice way to point you in the right direction. So uh, page break, for a long time people have been wanting uh, the option to break uh, a, a PDF at a certain point after a certain booking so that maybe they want to move the entirety of one booking onto the next page because maybe only one or two lines uh, were hanging on at the bottom of a page and then there's eight inches of other text and they just want to move it to the bottom page or even more desirable, people want to have the ability to separate a clean break from page one to page two or day one to day two to day three to day four. Um, so we'll have kind of a look at a pretty robust itinerary here. And we'll go ahead and pull up the PDF the way that it, that it looks right now without any kind of editing. So I'll just pull up PDF with images. So all the images, all the text. Uh, it's a little bit slower when I'm sharing screen. So here we are. So we have a long summary page because it's a long trip which bleeds right into the pricing terms and conditions right there on that date page so immediately there's a scenario where we might want to move the pricing terms and conditions off of this first page and onto the second page uh, and then also if you look down a little bit further you'll see that kind of the pre-travel information what I call the fluff uh, currency converter weather forecast what to pack automatically kind of uh, combines with the actual first day of the trip, the flight. And a lot of people want the ability to move all that information, the actual flight, onto its own page. That's exactly what this page break will do. Uh, and to do this, it's rather simple, and it's kind of in the same vein as a lot of the other actions that we've added recently, uh, which mainly live under these three dots here, these booking actions. So again, we can have a look at the way that the PDF came out naturally without any breakings. So the first thing we want to do is move pricing terms and conditions down onto the next page so that it's not on this same summary page. Uh, and this is very much a step and repeat. If you know how to kind of do it for one booking item, whether it's in the pre-travel section, doesn't really matter. You'll, you'll figure it out how to do it for all the other days as well. So it's as simple as this. So We'll go to that first item that we want moved down to a second page, hover over the three dots, uh, and now we see this new option that says uh, insert, where to go? 
insert page break before this booking. And before this booking, kind of on top of this booking, is the summary of the item. So we'll say insert page break before this booking. It'll spin for a couple seconds. Now we've got yet another icon for you. And this is to help you visualize where you have your page breaks set. So now if I run another version of this PDF, you'll see that it did exactly what we wanted it to do. It moved that booking essentially onto the next page. So we have two pages just because it's a long trip of the summary and where the pricing terms and conditions were previously here, we've told Access, nope, I want you to move all the bookings down onto the next page. Uh, and it's kind of a scenario where be careful what you wish for because every time you make a move, obviously it's going to affect anything below it. So you might have to insert a few different page breaks until you get it perfect or as close to perfect as you can. So now we can kind of review the rest of the document. Uh, and I already see another place where I would want to put a page break. So we're done with all of the fluff information from currency converter all the way up to what to pack and pricing terms and conditions. And then the real itinerary, you know, the flight or the first transfer or the hotel check-in. We've automatically started that on the first page. So what we do, we look at what booking that is. That's going to be the flight from Portland to San Francisco. And we'll simply find that booking right here. Go over those three dots. And we'll say insert page break before this booking. Again, we'll give you the little indicator where that page break is in case you need to adjust these later down the road. If you add bookings on top of or below, uh, you can always do that and we can tell you where they are. So let's go ahead and run one more version of this so you can see the concept with more than one page break. So here we go. We've got our first page break here that moved pricing terms and conditions from page two to page three. And then previously, this Wednesday, May 1st flight was on this same page with all this general text information. We didn't like that, so we moved it down onto the next page. And now from here, I always like a concise document, but time and time again, we have gotten um, the desire to, for every day, to kind of start and end on its own page, or for every day to begin on a new page, rather. And what that might look like is uh, on May 3rd, you want May 3rd to start on a brand new page. So in that scenario, you could insert a page break there. Keep in mind, this is obviously going to make for a longer document, but it could be a much uh, more concise, easy to read document. So you would do the same thing for every day if that's what you're looking for. And we'll have a quick look uh, at the effect that this causes. We won't add it for every day, but we'll add it for the first few days. Insert page break. So now I'll run one more PDF. And we'll just see kind of what the cause and effect were uh, by inserting the page breaks after every day. Keep in mind, if you have a short day, there's really not going to be a lot on the page. So here we go. So Wednesday, May 1st, all we really have are these two flights. But if you want uh, to be clear and concise that the next page also means the next day, here we go. Friday, May 3rd, which has enough information that it takes up more than one page. but it breaks uh, before you do anything on May 4th. So just a, a few different ways how to use the page break. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is jump right into the linking, uh, how to copy and link a booking, which is kind of the second part of this uh, presentation, <laughs> if I can call it a presentation. And what I'll do, again, I'll use that search feature just to show you how you can use that control F or command F to find any kind of superficial text anywhere on this main page. So command F. Uh, and I think I typed the word link. Yep, here we go. So Hawaii Adventure Wilshire copy and link sample. So if I look into this itinerary, and the scenario is here, uh, and maybe this is a bit too much. I think you guys have probably copied the copy covered the general notion of copying an itinerary uh, using our copy feature. But I'll go ahead and 
and uh, start with an entire copy of itinerary and linking, and then show you what if you add a booking later? Well, how do you take that individual booking and then add it into uh, another itinerary and link it? So let's, for intensive purpose, let's pretend that this is kind of our sample itinerary, maybe our master itinerary that we want to copy because maybe we have two couples traveling together and they're pretty much on the same itinerary. So they both need to see what to pack. They both need to see contact info. Uh, both couples need to see a flight. Both couples are on the same transfer, same hotel. Um, so, and then all you would really need to do is kind of swap out some of the details on the flight uh, and on the hotels. So here's what we'll do. We'll go to these three dots again. At this time, they're going to be at the itinerary level. So we'll hover over the three dots and we'll say copy itinerary. And I'll copy all. But since we're really going to end up editing the information for the flight, when I have the flights, I'm not going to link them. But for, for all the others, I want them to be linked. So that would be for essentially the transfers uh, and the what to pack and the contact information. So I'll actually uncheck the, uh, the linking option from the hotels because we're going to want to go in there and insert the proper couple's name, the proper couple's confirmation number, room number, uh, et cetera. Uh, however, everything else is pretty much going to be exactly the same. So there's a, a notion of copying, which will simply copy it over. And then there's a notion of linking. Linking will mean once we copy this information into a new itinerary, if we change information to the contact info, if we change the information on what to pack, or if we change the transfer information, it's going to change uh, in any itinerary that it's been copied and linked into. So here we go. We'll go ahead and select this option, copy to new itinerary, where we're given the option to go ahead and give it a new title. So maybe this will be for the Smith family. And we'll go ahead and say create new. So it takes us right into that new itinerary that you've created. You'll see all the bookings that are linked. This is actually a, a new feature as of today or, or maybe late yesterday evening. But previously, you would kind of not really know which other itinerary that this booking was associated with. Now, if you hover over it, you'll see it might be hard to, to see on the screen, but it says linked itineraries. Hawaii Adventure Wilshire copy and link sample. That's telling you that this booking is linked with the same booking in that itinerary right there. So that's kind of one concept of the new copy and paste or the copy and link uh, feature showing off which itinerary that's actually linked with. Um, and now another concept is, well, what if I add something right now uh, and I want it to be linked into that other itinerary as well? So it almost doesn't matter which of these two itineraries that you start from. So let's say on August 12th, they pick up or you plan for them uh, a private surfing lesson. So let's go ahead and just add a booking. So we're in the Smith sample. So we'll say new booking, tour activity. Uh, maybe I book Hawaii and maybe I book this surfing uh, guide quite a bit. So it might even be something that's in my library. And if it is, you can obviously pull it right out or if it's the very first time chances are that you're copying and pasting and adding this information uh, and if it's something you're going to use again you can certainly add to your library so let's go ahead and save it so this is a brand new booking this is only currently present in the smith family version of this itinerary however we need to get it into the wilshire version of the itinerary not just get it in there we want to go ahead and link it so that if it changes, we'd be able to update both itineraries at one time. So it might be not as intuitive because it's at the booking level, but you have to come up here to the, uh, the itinerary level to pull up this concept again, these three dots. So you'll again say copy itinerary, but this time we're only interested in just the one booking because all of the other itineraries have already been copied and linked into a subsequent itinerary. So we're just gonna say surf lessons, copy and link and this time we're not going to say copy to new itinerary we actually want to copy it to an existing itinerary so here you're just going to search you almost have to kind of memorize or give the other itinerary a very different name or include their last name so that it's different enough so it's easy to pull up so if you just type in a keyword from the itinerary you'll be able to pull up that specific itinerary 
and say copy to existing itinerary. Now it takes you into that itinerary. Uh, so of course we've got the surf lessons here. If we hover over this link, it's going to tell us the other itinerary that this is present in is the Smith version. Now here's the big thing. Uh, if we actually want to give this a time, maybe it's firming up a little more, we can go ahead and give it a start time, early morning start time, 845. And now that they're linked together, you, you have a couple options. You have a save option, which would only achieve the, the benefit of saving in this one itinerary, which I think sometimes has its purposes if they're going on different surfing uh, outings. If you want this booking to update in the exact same way in the other itinerary, that's where you'll click Save All. So if I click Save All, so in this itinerary, the Wilshire sample, We've just added a time, but we saved all. So, press my luck here. If I go into the Smith version of the itinerary and I look at that same surf lesson, it should have a 10 o'clock start time to it. And go into the surf lessons. And, I'm sorry, not 10 o'clock, 8.45 a.m. start time. So in short, that's kind of the advanced demo today was uh, page breaks. It was going to be how to, how to copy and link an itinerary and how to copy and link individual bookings. And on top of that, the newest feature is actually being able to hover over these three dots to show off which other itinerary that these bookings are linked into. Uh, and what I want to do, I want to take it a step further at the itinerary level, include uh, a little indicator at the itinerary level which itineraries have uh, linked bookings together and with a similar feature where you hover it over it so you can see which itineraries are actually linked together. Now we've got a few more minutes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to get to the chat section to, to pick up any questions. But if you'd rather kind of uh, jump off and continue with your day, you can always just send us a question at support at accesstravelapp.com. Uh, and we'll answer as quickly as we can. Oh, uh, Melissa <laughs> Melissa uh, asks, what are the new parser and AW parser on the right side of the itinerary? I have kind of a master uh, version of Access, so any kind of uh, improvements or integrations that we've tried over the years, uh, I have a few different buttons that nobody else has. Uh, there's nothing happens here if I click new parser or AW parser. Those were trial uh, integrations that we tried uh, years ago before settling with uh, Award Wallet as our parsing partner, which is the AW parser uh, right there. <laughs> I also have a few other buttons that people might notice, but uh, really nothing to highlight. Uh, and then let me go back. So Lindsay says, can you unlink different itineraries? That's a good question. There's not really a way to unlink an itinerary or a booking. One trick that you could do to unlink it. Uh, if you wanted to unlink this transfer, you, you can't really unlink it, but what you could do is make a duplicate of it. And when you have a duplicate of it, that just means that you could go in and delete the one that is linked. Um, so you've kind of achieved the same result as unlinking, but you have to go about it uh, a roundabout way. So you can make a quick duplicate of it and then just delete it. And if you deleted it, it's not going to delete um, the version that was in as many other itineraries as it was copied into. Um, and I think that's it for, for, this, for this session. Again, questions, uh, email us, please, support at accesstravelapp.com for what it's worth. I'll put this recording up in our support section. Thanks, everybody, for your time. And thanks, everybody, for making access an even stronger tool. Wishing you a great week.